Hi everybody, thanks very much for stopping by. My name is Nina Mace. I am a family and children photographer, a trainer and a mentor. I work with lots of photographers throughout the UK from newborn um, to outdoor family photographers, studio based photographers. And I'm here today to talk to you about how I work with Digital Lab as an outdoor family photographer who has no studio or IPS. Um, and also I thought I'd take this opportunity to cover the top 10 strategies that successful photography businesses have in common. I took a number of very successful uh, UK businesses and looked to see where the synergies were so I can offer some ideas and suggestions for how you can grow your business in obviously what's a very tricky time at the moment. Uh, so first, uh, just a little background just to give you an idea of what I shoot and how I work. This is some examples of my of my work, um, my autumnal colours. This will be very similar to what I will plan to shoot into late September, early October. I'm an outdoor, colourful, longer focal length family photography uh, photographer, and I've been in business for ten years nearly now. Um, so I do a lot of training and mentoring, but I also continue to photograph families so I can keep my foot in the market and understand. How things are feeling um, I think particularly relevant at the moment with everything that's happening and going on I still have a feel for the photography market in general I'm also a brand ambassador for Digital Lab I worked with them for a number of years before I actually became a brand ambassador um, but I just wanted to talk to you about how I work with them and why I chose to partner with them because it's very important when I partner with anybody um, that I really consider how we're going to work together and Ultimately, the team were a huge driver. I've got to personally know everybody that works at Digital Lab and just feel that they understand their clients. They are incredibly open um, to dealing with photographers, speaking to photographers. They get to understand your business. They will offer studio consultations over Zoom. They will chat to you about new product developments. If you speak to them about your photography style, they'll give you their thoughts on what frames and products fit best with your photography. Um, so it's predominantly the team. I love working with them, but they're also a business that never stands still. So they innovate, um, they consider new products, they get feedback from their brand ambassadors and all of their clients, and they continue to evolve their business to add new products based on what's happening in the market and also feedback from their clients. And how I work with them as an outdoor photographer, um, it, because I don't have a studio and I don't have, I don't follow an in-person sales strategy, my galleries are delivered digitally. Uh, and the reason I wanted to work with a, a product partner is to find a way to integrate product into that process, despite not seeing my consumers, my clients back in person. So there's a couple of elements that the reasons why I used it Digital Lab is just because the, the quality can't be matched. I've worked with them for a number of years and all of the product quality has been absolutely outstanding. Um, the products are unique and something different to that the general consumer can't buy off the shelf. And that's incredibly important when we're looking at added value is to think about putting product in front of clients that they can't go out and purchase themselves. And digital lab this have this additional element of this design support for their clients. So you can go and look at these room sets and design a wall display, which you can send within your digital gallery. One tip and one suggestion is to make sure you have product samples that you can take out with you on to shoot to share with your clients. So as I go into my series of autumn minis um, over the next month, I will take a framed product with me in the back of the car to show my clients the quality um, because the quality, the quality, you know, can't be can't be ignored when you put it in somebody's hands so they can see the quality of the print and the quality of the finish of the frame. So make sure even when you're taking your clients to and from back to the car park to collect your next client, for example, on your autumn minis that you just say, I just wanted to show, take this opportunity to show you this new product that I have and just to give you an idea of how it could look, your images could look up on the wall. And what I do is then send them, when I send them the digital gallery, I include these different options on wall collections. These are the medium mold wall collections. I like the triple and the quadruple collection. Um, I choose the images that sit nicely together and then include this within the gallery with an upgrade price to product. 
particularly works well in the run up to Christmas. Um, there's an element of, as well as the product being great, actually supporting your clients, so designing it for them and deliver it so it can go straight up onto the wall. So you're supplying this additional service for them. Uh, but if you, in the comments of this video, we will post a link to where you can find these templates online and make sure you speak to Digital Lab about their sample discount as well if you're looking for samples to take out this autumn winter. So as mentioned, I wanted to talk to you about top 10 strategies that successful photography businesses have in common. And what I'd like you to think is, as I'm going through these, is how does your business compare? Compare Where could you grow strategically? What different elements could you think to yourself, well, I can work on this now or in a quieter period in January, February of next year? What could be a long-term target? But if you combine all of these strategies and review this, this will give you a feel for what are the big projects that you could be working on as we head into 2021. First is to diversify. The most successful businesses that I see tend to diversify into a number of different areas. So they're not just a family photographer or baby photographer, for example. The, the key to success with this is to keep your style, your genre, your brand at the center of your extension. So I am all about children and family. So I run outdoor training for child child and family photographers. I run beginner photography courses for mum and dads. I work with child or family based commercial clients. So I keep children and family outdoor colour at the core of my brand, but have then diversified into all these different areas. Um, so training, education, commercial, personal branding, there's a huge amount of opportunities out there. And also if you're an outdoor family photographer, there's naturally quieter periods when it's colder in, in January, February, often in the school summer holidays when people are away, you can fill those quieter periods with a different product. So just have a think about what you're currently supplying, what your brand stands for, and where you could potentially diversify next year. Second, all of these successful photographers, when I look at them, have a very clear and recognisable photography style. So when they appear in my Facebook feed or my Instagram feed, I instantly know whose image it is. So have a look back at your work to see, is it clear? Is it recognisable? Does it look consistent? Are you editing in the same way? Are you sharing images that have the same look and feel about them? And also across medias, do you have a clear and consistent style? It takes a while to find what your style is. So if you're in the early days of your photography business, it may be you're not quite sure where you're heading at, but being conscious of the images that you're displaying, what you put out is what you attract back. So just make sure as, as best you can, you have a clear and recognizable style and that's what you continue to share. The third element is to exist across all social medias, but own one. It's incredibly difficult, um, and I find it a challenge, to maintain a social media presence across Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, Google+. Um, I exist across all these mediums, but I own one. So I tend to focus on one, and my where I like to focus and where I find I get the most interaction is in my Facebook community. So I have a Facebook business page, I have um, an Instagram page, which is growing quite nicely, but I really enjoy my Facebook community. Um, so think about where your clients are um, and also where you love to exist anyway. If it's something that you enjoy doing, you're likely to do a better job of it. So you want to exist across all social medias, but you want to own one. You want to know one like the absolute back of your hand. Four, all of these businesses have an incredibly clear and transparent pricing strategy. This is really important for you running a business, but also for your clients. Um, it ensures that they, they trust you, they understand your pricing. So go back and look at your pricing. Are you getting price inquiries when your pricing is on your website? If you are, then it's, it's potential that your pricing isn't clear, isn't clear and simple to understand. Also, just check the way you communicate your pricing, that you're using client language, not photography language. We have a tendency to say um, a 20 by 10 or a seven by five. Clients don't instinctively know what size of print that is. 
So just make sure it's clear, it's easy to find, it's easily understood. And, and the clue is if you have your pricing on your website and across your medias and you're still getting price inquiries, that potentially it's not clear and transparent enough. The second element to that is to make sure that as well as having a package or collection strategy, uh, whether it's IPS, whether it's digital, also have a view as to what your profit per hour targets are. So if you receive an occasional unusual request for an hour shoot, for example, for a commercial shoot locally, you know what your minimum profit per hour is. So you can instantly quote for any kind of off the shelf activity that doesn't fall within your normal pricing strategy. Five. These photographers, photographers that are most successful also tend to be the most visible photographer locally. Um, I work very hard with other local businesses, uh, community leaders to ensure that my business is really well known. So when people ask for a photographer or ask for recommendations, I mentioned. So have a look at how you can connect with your community, um, how you can join in, how you can get involved. So you tie the name of your business and your location as tightly together as possible. Um, it just means that you, that visibility will generate long term referrals and clients. Very, very important. It's something I worked really hard on when I moved from Hertfordshire to Surrey and has seen a great success in driving kind of long-term leads for me from the community for family work and commercial work. Six, successful brands are very, very customer service focused. This is really relevant when it comes to product and talking about dealing with digital ad is putting fantastic product in front of your clients that they can't normally access. Um, but thinking about the entire process are you answering people in a timely way? Are you giving them all the information they need? Is the entire process signed up? Are you going back to them for recommendations after? Are you following the complete cycle? And also, are you managing the customer funnel? So we focus a great deal on driving new clients into our business, but sometimes when we fall down is keeping those clients. If you're a newborn photographer and then you also shoot outdoors, they could be lifetime clients for you. So do you have a client management system? Do you keep all your clients details in one place? Do you have a prompt for when to contact them ahead of their first birthday or when they're about to start school? So have a think about your entire customer journey way all the way through to first inquiry, product delivery, and then your recontact strategy. It's something that we often don't focus on. We spend so much time driving new clients to the business that we don't look after the ones that we currently have. Eight so so important to have complete financial understanding i now know at this point in time what my tax liability for um next year is because i use a fantastic system called free agent there's lots of different systems out there i find free agent incredibly simple to use um, it means i can invoice from there i can see my incomings my outgoings my predicted tax bill my my mileage etc I have complete understanding and also a projection of what money I have coming in for the next few months and whether I need to fill any gaps or whether I need to slow my workload down because it's picking up too much. This just gives me complete financial visibility. So if you don't have a finance system, please go and have a look. Um, and also something to mention, a number of the business banking accounts now include, I believe NatWest now includes um, a free accounting system. So ask your bank if you business bank and if you haven't if you don't business bank currently that could drive your decision um, if they're giving away free software as well so number eight financial control very very important number nine have consistent branding across all your platforms so if i asked you to screenshot your facebook your instagram your website your pinterest and set them all alongside one another do they look consistent and this is important because what we're learning now and what I'm able to track through my business is that clients are coming into contact with me at multiple touch points. They're, they're going to my Instagram page and then they're going to my website or they're going to my Instagram, then to my Facebook, then through to my website. 
So all those touch points, I like to ensure that my branding is consistent, that they're seeing similar imagery. If it's autumn, for example, and that's what they're looking for. If it's mentoring, then everything in terms of mentoring communication should feel the same. So just go and sense check all your different platforms for me, pop them all side by side and see, are they looking consistent? Does the brand look great across the board? Because no longer are clients coming through just one medium, they're meeting you at multiple touch points. Um, and it just makes you look um, premium. And it just says a lot about your business if you are super consistent across all the different platforms. And 10, great photographers that run great businesses continue to invest and continue to grow. They don't rest on their laurels. They will look at their business and they'll say, where do I evolve to next? Um, what, what do I need to learn to be able to step into that section of the market? Do I need some lighting training? Do I need some business training? Um, it's very easy to not put money back into the business, but have a real think about where you need to grow and what that could do for your business in the long term. Um, so constantly reevaluate what's next to keep one step ahead of the competition and also just to keep your growth and development as well within your business to keep you really motivated. Uh, so in regard to that, um, I'm offering to win a free mentoring session with me, which is via Zoom. Um, so it could be from anywhere in the country. There will be details of how to win this session in the comments section below. Um, but I'd, I'd, if you haven't mentored before, we can go through these 10 steps. We can look at your business strategy and set some big objectives to say this is where you need to head towards. But it just is a great opportunity to have a conversation with someone else objective about your business model and to review your positioning and to come up with a plan for how to grow in 2021. Uh, if you don't win the competition, I have lots of ways for you to communicate with me. I have my Facebook and Instagram pages at, at Nina Mace Photography, but most importantly, I have my Facebook community. So if you search Nina Mace Training Group for Professional Photographers and request to join, this is just my it's space. It's completely free. It's where we share shoot tips. I run uh, live sessions with other training partners as well that I work really closely with about website, about lighting, about lifestyle photography, about PR. Um, there's lots of pinned sessions that you can go back and watch as well. So come join the community. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful group of very, very supportive photographers. Um, and thank you for your time. If you have any questions about training or mentoring or, or business growth or workshops, please feel free to drop me an email at nina at ninamacephotography.com and feel free to chat to Digital Lab about product samples or product ideas for you to put in front of your clients as we come into this incredibly important autumn winter sales period. So thank you for your time. Goodbye.